Great. So uh, once again, uh, good evening, everyone. It's uh, really great to be here. Um, my uh, uh, my topic will be uh, quite brief, uh, and uh, it will be quite similar to the colleague uh, uh, Adam Lubotsky. So it will concern the sources uh, about the invasion of uh, the Mongol army uh, to the Kingdom of Bohemia, or rather to the territory of Moravia. So uh, first of all, uh, it was nicely put in the first two, uh, first two um, uh, speeches uh, that indeed uh, the Kingdom of Bohemia uh, with, uh, with Moravia as its part was not uh, the main region uh, for the uh, Mongol expansion. So uh, really the Kingdom of Bohemia or Moravia was not devastated by the Mongol army. Uh, but rather the Mongol army marched quickly through the territory of Moravia. Uh, now I will put some general outline about what uh, really happened at that time. Uh, actually, we are uh, basically everything important happened uh, in April of 1241. <clears throat> so uh, one part of the Mongol army, of course, devastated uh, the territories of Poland. Uh, defeated uh, Henry de Pierce uh, at the Battle of Legnica. Uh, Henry de Pierce was actually son-in-law of Wenceslas I. Uh, and we know that he tried to uh, reach uh, his, uh, the, the Henry de Pierce with his army, but was late. Uh, it's said that's uh, about two days late. Then, uh, after shortly after this defeat, uh, the major part of this Mongol army uh, tried to move quickly uh, to the Kingdom of Hungary and they marched uh, through the territory of Moravia. Uh, Václav Korta, a Polish historian, estimated that before uh, the Battle of Legnica, the Mongol army had about 8,000 men. So it means that uh, this uh, army uh, after this battle must have been much smaller than 8,000 men, but it's very hard to estimate uh, the number of, the, uh, of, of this army at that time. So uh, we really know basically only that the army marched very quickly and that it uh, did not siege any fortified places. So uh, no towns, no monasteries were damaged at that time. And we also know that uh, the army uh, entered the Kingdom of Hungary in the vicinity of Trenčín, uh, Trenčín Castle, uh, at around the 21st of April. Uh, so they really spent only a few days in Moravia. We know for sure that no major battle took place in Moravia or in Bohemia. And uh, only uh, for information, Wenceslas I was the king of Bohemia at the time. So uh, here is the map. Uh, I put uh, known places uh, uh, to this map. So, for instance, we know that the Battle of Legnica took place uh, here. Uh, also, uh, I will discuss this later. We know that at the beginning of May, the King of Bohemia was here. Uh, so, in the vicinity of uh, Dresden. Uh, and once again, uh, uh, this is quite plausible that uh, the King of Bohemia was expecting the Mongol army to move further west. Uh, so he was prepared actually with his army, but uh, as, uh, as it showed later, uh, he was not uh, at, the, at the right place. Then we note about some damages uh, in the vicinity of Opava, it's here. And then we know that uh, the uh, Mongol army devastated the surrounding of of Trenčín Castle and that they uh, left uh, Moravia through a pass, which is pro probably the Hrozenkov Pass here. Then from the 14th century sources, uh, 14th century and later sources, we know uh, about some uh, actions uh, in the vicinity of Klocko, Klocko, which was at that time part of the Kingdom of Bohemia and also in the vicinity of Otmuchov, uh, which is close to Klocko. Uh, the rest of the um, uh, places uh, are either uh, connected with the Baroque legends or with the 19th century forgeries. So 
uh, those places uh, are not events of the real Mongol presence, uh, but rather of the 19th century uh, forgeries, modern forgeries. So uh, let's categorize the sources we can use. Uh, of course, it would be nice to have uh, enough charters. Uh, unfortunately, during the reign of Ancestors the uh, First, we have only very limited number of charters. It was still not uh, uh, typical to issue charter uh, whenever uh, the king did some legal act. So we have very limited number of original uh, or in some other way pre preserved charters which is a problem because, for instance, we would like to know uh, whereabouts of the Bohemian king, but unfortunately, uh, we really cannot draw uh, itinerary of the king. Uh, there are a uh, lot of holes in, in his itinerary. So basically, the only thing uh, we can learn from the charters issued by the king is that he was uh, at the 7th of May uh, in Königstein, so in the vicinity of Dresden, probably uh, expecting uh, the Mongols uh, to attack the Bohemia uh, fr from the west. And also this charter um, is not issue, uh, it is, uh, deals with the problems of borders, so uh, not at all with, with the Mongols. Uh, and then other thing that we could learn from the charters is uh, uh, about the damages of the Mongol army. Uh, uh, so we can expect that the towns uh, or monasteries would have some economic, economic privileges um, to uh, heal the wounds of the uh, Mongol army inflicted uh, before. But in fact, we have only one uh, charter. Uh, of such sort, and it comes from the 3rd of May of 1247, uh, uh, where Opava, or in German Tropau, uh, was given some economical privileges based upon uh, not specified destruction of the region uh, by the Mongol army. Uh, and this is it from the charters. The rest of the charters uh, are unfortunately the 19th century forgeries. Uh, and I won't, I won't be dealing with those uh, uh, 19th century forgeries uh, in this lecture. So we have only very limited information from the charters. Then uh, there is another category of uh, charters, uh, letters uh, that are connected uh, or that are mentioning the territory of Moravia and the Mongols. And this is very uh, variable collection. Uh, so you have some dictamine, uh, form books, um, uh, some letter collections, uh, chroniclers, e either uh, some extrapolations from the chroniclers. So this is very, uh, we call it mishmash. Uh, so very, um, uh, so you have some letters from instance, instance from Matthew Paris, uh, Albert Beheim, uh, Pope Gregory IV, uh, Duke of Austria, somehow mentioning the territory of Moravia or the King of Bohemia, but you don't have any details from those mentions. Uh, as you can see, the list uh, is quite long about those types of uh, letters uh, uh, and extrapolations and other briefs. Uh, so, uh, but those mentions are really uh, very brief, uh, only mentioning uh, very briefly, the territory of Moravia, uh, etc. So, this is uh, this uh, does not provide much information about uh, the real events of, of of 1941 in Moravia. Of course, then uh, we have uh, narrative sources, uh, especially chroniclers. Unfortunately, uh, from the 13th century, we don't have. Uh, how to put it, any big or uh, good uh, uh, chronicle of the history of, of the Kingdom of Bohemia. Uh, and actually the only narrative source from Bohemian, uh, that came from Bohemia, is so-called second sequel to Cosmas, uh, which is actually quite, quite a complicated source, uh, because it's compilation uh, from the end of the 13th century, uh, 
And uh, the author of this compilation puts together um, a lot of different sources uh, that are uh, that did not survive. And we don't know how he worked with those sources. Uh, so whether it's plain compilation or whether it's rather extrapolation, uh, etc. So quite a complicated source, but uh, it can hold uh, some first-hand uh, uh, witness uh, uh, chronicles that are lost today. Unfortunately, this chronicle is extremely brief. Uh, uh, when dealing with the invasion of the uh, Mongols into Moravia. And actually, this is quite interesting. Uh, it does not mention Mongols invading Moravia. It only mentions that in 1240, there was fear of the Tatars already. And also uh, to the year 1241, it mentions uh, the destruction of Poland and Hungary, uh, the death of uh, Henry the Pierce and the death of Koloman. Uh, but not Mongols in Moravia, which is quite strange because it's, it's a Bohemian source. Uh, so this uh, narrative source, this chronicle does not tell, tell us uh, anything about actually the events uh, at Moravia. Uh, then we have this uh, chronicle of the so-called Dalimil. Uh, we only know that he was not called Dalimil. It's uh, uh, rhymed chronicle in Czech from the uh, early 14th century. So it's not contemporary source. And uh, unfortunately, uh, this chronicle confuses the two events in Moravia, uh, the events of 1241 and 1253, when uh, the army of Bela IV uh, invaded uh, Moravia, besieged Olomouc, uh, and with the army of Bela IV, uh, there were Cumans. Uh, they are referred to as the pagans or even Tatars. So it uh, causes confusion. Uh, unfortunately, uh, Dalimil confuses those two events. Uh, it's quite clear, but he provides us some unique information. For instance, uh, that there were some skirmishes near Klatsko, at that time a Czech uh, a Bohemian city today in, in Poland. But we cannot confirm this with anything else only but with uh, Drugosz who has some information about skirmishes around Otmuchów uh, nearby. Uh, and also um, this uh, so-called Dalimel mentions uh, uh, mysterious Mongol spies uh, called Kartasi. And we know absolutely nothing about this group of people. Uh, sometimes uh, uh, it's stated that those were uh, Roma people, but uh, this is very unclear whether there were uh, some uh, Mongol spies if so, whether there were uh, Roma people or some different ethnicity. Once again, this is a piece of information that cannot be confirmed uh, from other sources. So in general, uh, we really have frustratingly few sources uh, from the Bohemian origin about the invasion of Moravia. So we have to search elsewhere. Uh, of course, uh, very important is um, uh, Epistola Magistri Rogeri in Miserable Carmen, uh, which very briefly uh, described that uh, after the Mongols defeated the Polish Duke, uh, they marched quickly through Moravia. They were unopposed and that they entered uh, uh, the Kingdom of Hungary through Porta Hungaria, Hungaria which means uh, the Hungarian gate. Uh, which is most probably the Hrozenkov Pass uh, in the vicinity of Trenčín, because from other sources we know that the Trenčín, the vicinity of Trenčín was uh, damaged by the Mongols uh, in late April uh, 1241. But this is very, very brief uh, mention about uh, Mongols marching quickly through Moravia. Then uh, we have this Annales Sancti uh, Pantaleonis Coloniensis uh, mentioned already several times. Uh, uh, it's a very well-informed source from about the time of Mongol invasion, especially the continuation uh, from the late uh, 1240s. Uh, and this source is also mentioning that the Mongols uh, marched very quickly through Moravia, uh, supposedly in one day, uh, which is obviously not, uh, not possible even for Mongol army. 
but we can believe that uh, it was very quickly. Uh, they, they, they marched very quickly. They did not spend uh, time in Moravia. One important detail is uh, that uh, they did not uh, take any of the fortified places. Uh, so this chronicle mentioned this, uh, um, mentioned this feature of the Mongol so-called invasion. Uh, and then uh, what can we use uh, next is uh, the chronicle of uh, Jan Bugos, also mentioned here, which is rather complicated. But we know for sure that Lugos used a lot of sources, different sources. For instance, uh, for instance, we know that he used the chronicle of Přibík Kulkava of Radenin, um, the first variants of this chronicle from the uh, 1360s. Uh, and problem is this, that this chronicle, for in instance, also mixed the events of 1241 and 1253 in Moravia. So uh, Bugos has some nonsensical information about the Mongol invasion of Moravia, thanks to this Přibík uh, Pulkava. But also he probably knew some uh, more lost sources. Uh, and for instance, with connection with Moravia, he is uh, mentioning Depoltici. Uh, uh, at the Battle of Legnica. This is quite interesting because Depoltici, uh, common name of those uh, family uh, was uh, Depolt or Theobald, therefore the Depoltici. Uh, they were actually Przemyslids, uh, but uh, they were expelled in the early 1220s. And uh, uh, it was mentioned here that uh, supposedly uh, in the Battle of Legnica, there was this Polish, uh, sorry, Moravian Mar Margrave uh, Boleslav, which is not true. Uh, uh, there was no Margrave of Moravia at that time. Rather, it was the King Wenceslas I himself. But this Boleslav was from this uh, Depolitici family. And it, yeah, it is uh, reasonable to assume that uh, uh, they might even seize uh, the, the Margraviate of Moravia, and because of that, uh, they were expelled to Poland. So this is uh, quite interesting detail. Um, and also, uh, Dugos is mentioning those skirmishes near Otmuchów, uh, which once again is uh, rather unclear whether this really took place or not. Last thing, uh, last type of sources we might use is, of course, archaeology. Unfortunately, uh, there is no uh, proof of Mongol presence in Moravia from archaeological evidence. So uh, we have no uh, Mongol arrows uh, or nothing uh, that would uh, indicate the presence of, uh, of Mongols in Moravia whatsoever so far. Um, on the other hand, for instance, uh, there is unpublished proof that the Cumans actually uh, took part in the siege of Olomouc because very recently a part of the bow, of a nomadic bow, was found in Olomouc. Uh, but this is part of the events of 1253. And also in the uh, uh, area of the castle of Olomouc, uh, this piece of uh, bone carving was found uh, with some nomadic features. Uh, but uh, the dating of this uh, bone carving is uh, unclear. It could be 12th century, it could be 13th century. So uh, connection with the Mongols is very disputable here. So basically no uh, archeological proof of Mongol uh, devastating Moravia whatsoever. So we can conclude that really the Mongols uh, uh, only passed through Moravia very quickly and they did not cause any major damage to, to the Terra Moravia. So thank you. <laughs>